Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're gonna be covering the three long bones that make up the leg. Uh, first here, we see the femur. So this is the bone that makes up your upper leg or your thigh. The femur is the largest bone in the body. Here on the left side of your screen, we see a right and a left femur from the anterior view. So we're looking at the front of the femur. And then over here on the right, all I did was just roll those same two bones over so that we could see the back, the posterior view of the right and the left femur. So you do need to know right and left for the femur. But before we talk about that, I'm gonna go over the markings that you need to know for the femur. First, up at this end, we see this large round feature. This is called the head of the femur. So the head is this large ball-like structure, and that's what fits into the acetabulum that we saw on the pelvis. Just below the head, this kind of stalk-like area right here, this is called the neck. So the head, and then just beneath that is the neck. Next, we see these kind of large swollen areas right here. These are called trochanters, and one of them is significantly larger than the other one. So the larger is the greater trochanter. The smaller one is the lesser trochanter. Down at the opposite end, we have a couple of things that we need to know. This smooth area right here on the anterior side, this is called the patellar surface, and that's where your patella or kneecap rests. And this area right here, and this area right here, so there and there, those are called epicondyles. But since there's two of them, we need to be able to distinguish. Well, the head of the femur points towards your pelvis, so it's pointing towards the middle of your body. The side with the head is the medial side of the femur. So this is the medial epicondyle. And then on the opposite side from the head, this is the lateral epicondyle. So over here, this is the medial epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle. Epicondyle now is a word that we have not yet come across when we're talking about bones. We've heard of condyles, which we said were similar to processes. They were something that kind of stuck out, but they were more blunt than a process. They did not come to a sharp point. So what is an epicondyle? An epicondyle, epi means above. So an epicondyle is above a condyle. So that implies that there are condyles, which on the posterior side, that's what these large, smooth structures are. These are the condyles. And just like the epicondyles, there's two of them, one on each side. And remember the head was medial. So the condyle that's on the same side as the head, this is the medial condyle and the other one is the lateral condyle. So those are all the structures that you need to know for the femur. But this is one of the bones that you do need to know right and left. So as we said with the pelvis uh, and with the scapula, the trick to knowing right and left is to know three points. And then know which direction each of those three structures or points should face in anatomical position. What I like to do on the femur is find the end that has the head that faces up. It faces superior because that's the top of your thigh. The head itself is what fits into the pelvis. It fits into the acetabulum. So that has to face your body. It faces medially. At the other end, we looked at the patellar surface. That's where your kneecap, your patella sits. 
but on the other side we have that big indentation in between the two condyles. That's the back of your knee. So that side faces posterior, it faces towards the back. Using those three points, the end with the head goes up, the head goes medially, and the, the spot in between the two condyles faces posterior, you can use that method to, fi to figure out if it is a right or left femur. Now we move down to the lower leg, and there's two bones in the lower leg. The one we're looking at here is the larger of the two. This is the tibia. Next, we will look at on the next slide, the fibula. Now, one of the things that I've noticed that students tend to do uh, without fail every semester, I have a lot of students that kind of combine the two words and I see a lot of tibula or fibia. Pay very close attention when you're writing these words that you write tibia or fibula. Don't combine the words because then I don't know which one you mean and it would be considered wrong on an exam or a quiz. So let's look here at the tibia. We're going to learn the markings that you need to know as well as this is another bone that you need to know right and left. So it's kind of hard to see some of the markings on this because it's, there's kind of a glare, but I will point out all the markings that you need to know. So first, in this view, on the left side of your screen, this is the anterior view. So we're looking at the front of the tibia. And these two on the right side of your screen, that is the posterior view. So we're looking at the back of the tibia. Up here at the top, this is the part of the tibia that the femur rests on. So this is the lower part of your knee joint. Now, this area right here, there's a few features that you need to know. First, this area right here is called the medial condyle, and this is the lateral condyle. On this one here, we see the lateral condyle and the medial condyle. Just in front, and it's hard, kind of hard to see right here, but there's a little knot right there, and that's called the tibial tuberosity. The tibial tuberosity is if you feel just below your kneecap, that little bump that you've probably hit on a chair or a coffee table a dozen times, that is the tibial tuberosity. And there is a very skinny raised edge that goes down this part right here. This is called the anterior crest. The anterior crest. That's often what you refer to as your shin bone but that is the anterior crest, which is just a part of the tibia. At the bottom part, we see there's an area right here that forms almost kind of a hook. When you feel your inner ankle bone, this is what you're feeling. This is called the medial malleolus. The medial malleolus is what makes up the inner ankle bone that you can feel when you rub your ankle. So how do you tell right and left? The three points that we can think about to know what position these should face when in anatomical position. For me, I think this flat spot, since that's what the femur rests on, that has to go upward when you're in anatomical position. The tibial tuberosity faces forward. And since this is the medial malleolus, your inner ankle bone, this has to face towards the middle of your body, the midline or the medial part of your body. So for this end to go up, for this to face forward, and for this to be towards the middle of your body, this would have to be a right tibia. There's no way to put that on the left side of your body and have all of those things facing the right way. The second bone of the lower leg 
is the fibula, and it is significantly skinnier than the tibia was. This is also the bone that if someone breaks their leg, this one is typically the bone that's most likely broken. One, because it's on the lateral part of the lower leg, and two, because it is so much smaller than the other two leg bones. So most of the time, if someone breaks their leg, this is the bone that gets broken. So what are the things that you need to know about the fibula? There's actually not a lot. You do not need to know right and left, and there are only two markings that you need to know on the fibula. Here, this is called the head, and this is called the lateral malleolus. The lateral malleolus is your outer ankle bone. When you reach down and you feel your ankle on the outside of your leg, this is what you're feeling, the lateral malleolus. And they can look really, really similar. So two things that I tell people to watch for is first, the head has this area right here, which is kind of flat, not completely flat, but it's flatter than we see down here. This flat area actually articulates with a part of the tibia, whereas the lateral malleolus tends to come to more of an angled point. The second thing, and this isn't always really easily visible, but the head has a ridge that kind of runs around most of the bone, and the lateral malleolus does not have that. So that's one way to orient yourself to know which is the head and which is the lateral malleolus.